This semester, Henderson was honored to welcome writer and director Susan Youssef as she was kicking off the university tour of her first feature film, Habibi. Sociology professor Dr. Malcolm Rigsby invited Youssef to premiere her film during International Focus Week. Well, after 10 years and all the obstacles of creating this film, how did you feel whenever you finally got to screen it for the first time or just show it to someone for the first time? How did you feel? Well, the very first time that we screened it was at the Venice Film Festival and it was, the only thing I could explain it as like a Cinderella moment because I had so many people with me who had worked on the film that flew a very long distance to be with me, to support me at the festival, as well as the festival itself being very supportive and nurturing. And Lido Venice is astonishingly beautiful setting. So it was, I think, I, I don't remember too much of it. It was like a big uh, haze because it was such an overwhelming, powerful, positive moment. But it also it was perfect because we were in a section called Venice Days, which is a smaller section of the Valley's Film Festival. So the first screening was very intimate. Uh, and I think the intimate, smaller screening was appropriate for this kind of film. So it was not overwhelming. It was just the right size, the right amount. And afterwards, my cast and crew really wanted to drink and party and have a good time and I think I had one juice and then I went home. I think I just abandoned them. I just wanted to sleep and I went home and I had the best sleep I think I had in years. How or why did you choose to bring your film to Henderson? Well, I chose because uh, Professor Malcolm Rigsby has been supporting my work for years. The Habibi was made through something called crowdsourcing, which means that most of the film was supported through individual donations as well as grants. And Professor Rigsby was a supporter of the film early on, and he had seen one of the incentives I'd given to donors of the film was um, a preview of my work through a documentary that I made when I was a student called Forbidden to Wander. And he supported that, and I think that gave him a little bit of faith that bringing Habibi here would be a good idea. And he worked very, very hard. And um, the education tour was something I decided on because Habibi hasn't um, received traditional distribution. In other words, we have many, many festival invitations, but we are not going to local theaters. So for places like Arkadelphia, if we don't do a university tour, people here won't see it. So it was very exciting for me actually to be able to come to Arkansas with the film. I know that you spoke a little bit about kind of two in interpretations of the ending of the film. So could you elaborate a little bit on that for me, please? Uh, the two... Uh, there's a literal ending, which uh, I'm not going to reveal it, but an ending that people really believe actually happens. And then there's a metaphorical ending. And the reason I structured the film like that was because I wanted to somehow have this message of hope and creativity for people um, all around the world. In other words, and under any conditions that we're living in, even under conditions when human rights, basic human rights are being denied, the ability to create and uh, is something that takes us beyond oppression. And that was, the, for me, the general message for the ending of the film. Were there any specific influences as far as your cinematography goes that you had maybe while you were getting your Master of Fine Arts? I really uh, loved Iranian cinema. That's why I'm actually so happy this year that Separation won a Best Foreign Language Picture because I've actually been influenced by Iranian cinema for the past since I was 22 years old, I watched a film called The Apple um, by Sabir Makhbobov. And I remember seeing that, I was really young. I'd never seen uh, a film that looked like that before. And actually up to that point, I didn't really love cinema that much. But seeing a film made without even very much music, without elaborate cinematography, with not so many locations, um, almost looking like a documentary. That really inspired me, and I also thought it's interesting to make a captivating cinema without needing, like, if you've seen, I don't know if you've seen Separation, but that film, it doesn't have any of the hallmarks of the yeah. films that we see here. It's, you don't, there's not very much nudity, there's not really violence, there's not um, really beautiful, glamorous looking people, I mean, attractive people, but people that look like me and you are in that film. And yet it is such a, a, a masterpiece, like it's been called because of the actual, um, 
the skill of the director and the actors and the excellent uh, script. And to me, making a film stripped bare and carrying it on the own artistic merit of the content, I thought that was a really exciting endeavor. And I, that really inspired me and also made me think that I could make a film in Palestine with very little. It made me think I don't need to have millions. I can make a film as long as my skill and the skill of the actors can step, we can go to the plate. And that, so I'm so happy now that actually Iranian cinema was honored this year. And I always make a joke that inside of me, I maybe have the aesthetics of a 16 year old, 60 year old Iranian uh, man. <laughs> Susan, thank you so much, and good luck in the future. I know it's going to do well. It did wonderful here last night, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, HSU.